Number 61. Late on an autumn day, the relative humidity is 45% and the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. What will the relative humidity be that evening when the temperature has dropped to 10 degrees Celsius, assuming constant water vapor density? All right, so I'm going to use the formula I developed in problem number 60. Uh, if you want to see where this formula comes from, I went through excruciatingly uh, detailed uh, analysis of how to get there. Okay, so if you want to torture yourself, check out that video. Or if you want to really know where it comes about, check out that video. You can also just memorize this formula. All right, that's fine. Uh, but I, I would suggest you understand where it comes from if you really want to do well in the class. So percent relative humidity, uh, finally, will be equal to the percent relative humidity initially multiplied then by the saturation vapor density initially, all then divided by now the saturation vapor density finally. So they're asking us to find some uh, percent relative humidity that evening or later in the day. So this is what I'm after. That means I need to know these three variables. So they tell us the relative humidity earlier in the day, right, it's 45%. So what I can simply do is start plugging in the values. So this is 45.0, do not convert it to the decimal, all right? And if you wanna know why, check out the video, number 60. The saturation vapor density initially. So what we have to do is we have to look up the, the so we have to know the temperature. All right, the temperature initially is 20 degrees Celsius. You go to your table, 20 degrees Celsius, and you look up that saturation vapor density. So that will be now 17.2, okay, gram per cubic meter. And then uh, the temperature now drops, right? It went now down to 10 degrees Celsius. So now let me put it in a different color. So now what you have to do, go to your table, find 10 degrees, and then find that saturation vapor density because that's the final saturation vapor density, and then you plug that in. So this is going to be 9.40, all right? Now, um, we're fine with putting in the units the way they are. I know the units here are gram per me cubic meter. Uh, however, you know, in this formula, it's simply just a ratio. These units will cancel. So I don't care if they're gram per cubic meter, kilogram per cubic meter, whatever, gram per liter. It doesn't matter as long as they are the same, okay? You're gonna get the right answer. So percent relative humidity will then be equal to, let's just do the math. So now it's 45 times then 17.2 divided by 9.4. And we get about 82.3. So 82.3%. And voila, there's the answer. Okay. Now, uh, just connecting this idea to something you might, I'm just thinking about it. Uh, notice how we started at a higher temperature and then went to a lower temperature. Right, And what happened to the percent relative humidity? We went from a lower percent relative humidity then to a higher percent relative humidity. You might be familiar with like if you go out, you know, if you're summer, summer day or whatever, you know, you go out um, in the morning, right? And you'll notice there's like dew on the cars and on the grass and everything. There's water vapor, right? Or there's water actually that condensed on the leaves, right? On the grass, on the car, whatever. Uh, why does that happen? Well, that happens because the percent relative humidity went over 100%, meaning that air cannot hold any more water vapor. So it has to go somewhere, so it condenses on out of the air, all right? So that's basically what happens. You, It's warmer during the day, then it gets colder at night. And the percent relative humidity generally goes from being lower during the day than to being higher at night. If this number is over than 100%, you get dew outside, you get condensation. It's literally as simple as that. And I could have asked the question then, at what point, right at what, um, at what saturation vapor density or something like that finally, uh, you know, is there, uh, does dew occur? And you're basically going to say, you're gonna plug in 100 here, find this, and then I can ask for the temperature. And then once you find this uh, saturation vapor density, you're going to go to the table and see where it fits in. Anyway, in case the problem changes, I don't know, right? I'm just trying to arm you with uh, with more tools, all right? So you know how to then approach a different problem that you might not have seen before, right? To a man with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. I don't want you to just have a hammer. Thank you. Take care, guys.